In this unit, we're going to describe all the chips that you have to build in project two and give you some uh, uh, guidelines on how to actually implement them. So when you set out to build the chips of project two, you can certainly use all the chips that you built in project one. You know, these are the fruits of your hard labor. So you can certainly uh, plug them into your uh, HDL implementations. And using these building blocks, you now have to build uh, the following five chips, ranging from half header all the way to ALU. Basically, this is a family of combinational chips from simple headers to more complex ones. So let us start with the simplest uh, uh, chip in this uh, family, the half header. The half header takes two bits and adds them up and outputs both the sum of these two bits and the carry bit, which may be either zero or one. This is the truth table of the half header. And here is the stub file of this chip. And if you look carefully at this, uh, this uh, truth table, you will realize that the sum and the carry columns are identical to the outputs of two gates that we have already built in project one. So this tip is sufficiently, I think, helpful uh, to let you understand that building this gate is a rather trivial thing. You have to pick up two gates that you already built, plug them in in some way, and uh, what you get is a half header functionality, which is kind of interesting because we use a logical device to affect something which is semantically an addition operation, something that happens all the time when you do digital design. The next chip up the hierarchy is called full header, and the full header is slightly more powerful than the half header. It is capable of summing up three incoming uh, 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 bits, so to speak, and it outputs the same thing, the sum of the three bits and the carry. This is the truth table of the full header. This is the stub file that you have to complete. Now, in general, you can build a full header using uh, two half headers, uh, which you can put together and add some glue in, in the form of some other uh, logic gates that combine the operations of these two uh, half headers. And this, by the way, is the reason why this gate is called a half header, not this one, but the one we saw previously, because it takes two half headers in addition to some other functionality to deliver the functionality of a full header. By the way, this is not the only way to implement a full header. You can do it in other ways, so you're welcome to, uh, to come up with any HDL implementation that makes sense. The next uh, chip that we'd like to talk about is a 16-bit header. Uh, we begin to see some uh, industrial strength uh, addition, so to speak. Uh, this is the, uh, uh, the stub file. And uh, if you think about it, it can be built quite easily from a sequence of, uh, of 16 uh, regular headers or 16 uh, full headers. So you put these 16 headers one next to the other, and you can pipe uh, the carry bit of one header to one of the inputs of, uh, of the next header up the uh, significance ladder, so to speak, going from right to left. And notice that according to the chip uh, specification, the most significant carry bit is simply ignored. Moving along, the next uh, chip is called uh, incrementer. It's uh, a simple version of an header. It takes a single input called in, it adds one to the incoming value and delivers the result. The subfile is uh, straightforward, and uh, you can build such an incrementer uh, using uh, the chips that you built already. In doing so, I just want to remind you that in HDL, you can represent the single bit values 0 and 1 using the keywords false and true, respectively. Finally, we get to the uh, most interesting uh, chip in this uh, project, the ALU. And, uh, we talked about the ALU uh, to a great detail in the previous unit, but just to repeat uh, uh, the main functionality of the ALU, I'm giving you this uh, uh, section of the stub file that you will get from us, which documents what the ALU is supposed to do. Once again, all the operations here are straightforward. We've done them before using uh, previously implemented chips. So now you have to put together all this functionality in order to deliver the required ALU functionality. Uh, two uh, useful uh, hints, I hope. You can build this ALU using a 16-bit adder and various chips that you built in uh, project one. 
And finally, you can, uh, you can do all of the above. You can build all this functionality with less than 20 lines of HDL code, which is another manifestation of the simplicity and elegance of this uh, non-trivial chip. In terms of resources, you have to go to the uh, NAND to, NAND to Tetris uh, uh, website and uh, get the full description of, the, uh, of Project 2. Once again, I want to remind you that if you have uh, downloaded the course uh, uh, software suite, uh, there's no need to download anything else during the course. You now have uh, a directory on your computer called uh, project slash 02, which includes all the uh, files which are necessary for project 2. Uh, there are a few more resources that I described in, uh, in project 1, which are relevant uh, to this project also. So finally, uh, some uh, best practice advice. Much of it repeats uh, what I said in uh, uh, project one, so I don't want to, uh, to read it aloud, but you certainly have to go through it before you set out to work on the project. Now, there's something new that we have to say about uh, project two. The best practice advice is not to use your HDL implementations and instead use their built-in versions, which are automatically available when you use our hardware simulator. So let me repeat and explain uh, how we do it. If you look at your Project 2 files, you will see that they include only six chips, beginning with a half header and ending up with the ALU. And yet, I just told you that you're welcome to use previously defined chips like AND, OR, MOOCs, and so on. You can use these chips precisely because they are not listed, they are not available in your Project 2 directory because the simulator works in such a way that if it tries to evaluate a chip part and it doesn't find it in the current directory, it reverts to using its uh, uh, built-in version of, of this chip. So this setting is ideal for our purposes. You just use the chips that we gave you and you use any previously defined chips as chip parts and the simulator will kick in and use the automatic versions uh, whenever uh, it's necessary. So. This has been an overview of uh, Project 2 and all the chips that you have to, to build in this, uh, in this project. And the next unit, as usual, at the end of each week, will be Perspective, in which we'll give you some more information about uh, combinational logic and about uh, ALUs of other computers and so on.